All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how you change momentum. So let's say I had a, a toy car on the ground, and it was just resting there, and it wasn't moving. So it would have a momentum of zero. The question is, how would I give it momentum? The obvious answer is I would push it. And the harder I pushed it, the more momentum I would give it. Also, the longer I pushed it, the more momentum I would give it. If I just gave it one quick push and then let go, Sure, that would give it a lot, some momentum, but if I ran along with it and kept pushing it, that would give it more momentum. And so the way we write this is with the formula delta P, meaning change of momentum, equals the force you exert times the length of time that you push it for. And another word for change in momentum is called impulse. So in this situation, what will the change in momentum be of a 5 kilogram block if it experiences a force of 200 newtons for 13 seconds. So I'm asked to find the change in momentum, and that is found by taking the force, 200 newtons, times the 13 seconds. And so 200 times 13 gives me 2600. And if you look at the units, you might say, oh, newton seconds, but that's not really the unit we're going to use. If we remember what a newton actually is, it's a kilogram times a meter per second squared. That's a newton. So then if you multiply that by seconds, the seconds cancel, or at least some of them do, leaving you with these units, which kilogram meters per second, you might realize, hey, that's a momentum unit. So that's why this works. So we've calculated the impulse here um, based on this force in time. And you might be saying, well, what about the mass of the block? You know, where does that play in? It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how massive this object is. All that matters as far as changing the momentum is how hard you push it and for how much time. Um, now the results, a more massive object will not be moving as fast as a result of this push. We'll see that kind of later. But basically, the mass of the block has no effect on how much you change its momentum, just the force and the time. All right, so here's a cart, and I want to increase its momentum by 140. So delta P equals 140 kilogram meters per second. And I have a force of 280 newtons. That's my force. So I want to know how long I have to push it for. So delta P equals force times time. So I want to change it by 140 kilogram meters per second. And I have a force of 280 newtons. So that's times time. So if I divide both sides by 280, I get the time I need to push it is half a second. So pushing for half a second at a force of 280 gives me a change of 140. Once again, I did not use the mass of the object. It had no bearing on how much the momentum changed. This could have been a 1,000 kilogram block, and the same force in same time would give me the same change in momentum. All right, here's one more last situation. I have a car that is crashing into a wall, and the car is moving. It has a momentum of 24,000 kilogram meters per second and it's going to crash into the cement wall. And when it does that, what do you think is going to happen to its momentum? It's going to change. So it's going to have a change in momentum. It's going to lose all of it. So 24,000 kilogram meters per second. So that is the impulse that it's experiencing, the change in momentum. Whenever you see the word impulse from now on, you should instantly think change in momentum. That's what it is. What force does the car feel? So it says it came to a stop in 0 0.08 seconds, 0 0.08. So we know the change in momentum, we know the time, so we can calculate the force. So negative 24,000 equals the force times 0 0.08 seconds. So 24,000 divided by 0 0.08 seconds, and it's going to feel a force of 300,000 newtons. That's a really large force. That's why this would be bad to be in this car, because you're experiencing a very strong force on the car and probably your body. Um, so that's the force. Now, how would the impulse change if the car crashed into like a bale of hay instead? Well, remember, impulse is just change in momentum. If this car crashes into a bale of hay and still comes to a stop, well, ultimately, it's still going to lose all that momentum. So its impulse is the same. But what might be different is it might take longer to stop. Maybe it takes a full second to stop, in which case negative 24,000 equals F times 1 the force you're experiencing is 24,000, much better than 300,000. So your impulse is the same, your change in momentum, 
But what is different, and you'll often maybe be confused, is your impact, the force that you experience. So impulse does not change no matter what you crash into, but the impact force might change depending on how long it takes you to come to a stop. So two different things. Make sure you know the difference between those two. Uh, all right, so until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.